everyone my name is Teresa welcome to my channel so in today's video I am going to do makeup and myths this is a series where I put on my makeup and I talk about a local urban legend to myself so I live in Buffalo New York so I usually tell you a story of a place close to me but I am thinking about branching out and doing like places around the world so if you have a place by you that has urban legends scary stories anything like that i would love to know and i could research it if you're not already i would love if you would subscribe if you're new here and for today's makeup and myth i'm going to be talking about the buffalo state asylum so i'm going to start doing my makeup before I would get, forget. And if there's any product that I forget to mention, I will link all that into the description box in case you're interested. So the Buffalo State Asylum was built, or it opened in 1880, but it took over 25 years for them to build it. It's a gorgeous building. It's four stories. I want to say it was over like 500 or 50,000 square feet or something. It's just a huge, huge campus. And I know the doctor, he wanted like a open, like, open light like sunlight in his facility he thought it helped treat patients to have a lot of sunlight a lot of space he wanted them to have like green space and fresh air it's an incredible building like if you're into old buildings and architecture this is it's just gorgeous they actually um put this asylum in the National Register of Historic Places. I know they did start tearing down one part of the building, like before it became a, a landmark, but now it's all protected. So in the late 60s, the asylum became very overcrowded, like over 3,000 patients. So they ended up closing it down and moving the patients to the Buffalo Psychiatric Center. So the old asylum was left abandoned and fell into despair and decline. But now the, ho the asylum, the old asylum was turned into an 88 room hotel, which they call the Henry Hotel, which I think is a really neat, I don't know, kind of interesting that an asylum was turned into a hotel I know a lot of people love staying there a lot of like ghost hunters or people who just love old buildings it's a very popular place to get married I actually would love to stay in there the hotel like they kept everything very original like the staircases the tile all the details are original to the the building and i know the patient rooms like the hotel rooms were the old patient rooms which is very interesting <laughs> so when asylums were first created asylum is actually the definition of asylum is an institution offering shelter and support to people who are mentally ill. So it was supposed to be a place, like a safe haven for people, because back in the 1800s, if people had mental illness, they were either homeless, like they lived on the streets, um, they starved to death. Well, in New York, every county started to build an asylum to house people with mental illness. Well, back in the 1800s, they had very inhumane ways to treat the mentally ill. They have learned from them that those practices, thank goodness, 
but some of the treatments that they would do would be lobotomies, lobotomies, where they would drill a hole in your skull and I'm pretty sure they would like destroy a part of your brain and they would also use an ice pick method to achieve this. I have read that that, you know, procedure is now outlawed, outlawed, thank goodness, because you pretty much turn somebody into a zombie, like motionless, just, I don't know, I just think that would be terrible. Another treatment they would do is hydrotherapy. They would take cold water is thought to cool you down. Like if you're hot tempered, angry, aggressive, they would use cold water in either showers or baths, or they would take warm water to calm your nerves. Like if you couldn't sleep, you had anxiety, you're stressed out, they would do that. But the treatments, I guess they still do hydrotherapy to this day, but it's much more humane the way they do it. Like they would leave people in an ice cold bath for hours, even up to days, or in scalding hot showers. And this practice happened in a lot of, like all the asylums back in the, the late 1800s. Another treatment they would do is electric shock therapy which I guess what they would do is send like electrical seizures to the brain and it would pe put people in kind of like an emotionless, like zombie-like state for days. I believe they still do. Oh, my cat just got one of my beauty blenders. I swear. <laughs> but I guess they still do electric shock therapy in some places. They don't do it in the new Buffalo facility, but I guess they do it in a more humane, safe way, I suppose. And when I was doing my research, there was some newspaper articles from the late 1800s, I believe it was 1893, of documents of abuse that happened in the asylum. Two orderlies were abusing the patients. I guess they would confine patients to their bed and leave them there for months. And they would be covered in bruises and just sitting in their filth, completely neglected. They wouldn't allow some patients to have visitors. Um, the patients would be covered in bruises and wounds. They would hang up patients by, with towels and beat them. They would also choke them with towels and they would hold them underwater while they were taking a bath until they almost drowned. I mean, there's been cases of them choking someone so hard until they blacked up out and they would have to give them like mouth to mouth so they wouldn't die. Like people, patients would be so close to death. So I guess these orderlies ended up getting suspended I mean, they should have definitely gotten into more trouble than that, but this was 1893. So this asylum has lots of his, you know, history of a very disturbed past. And you know how many people probably passed away there and a lot of stories that we don't even know. So we'll get into the hauntings of the asylum. It is said that mentally disturbed greater for hauntings because they have higher functions of unconsciousness. According to Buffalo Ghost Walks guide, Jason Whitfield. So there have been many stories, shadow figures, uh, flashes of lights throughout the building, old music playing, and wheelchairs moving. So I told Katie that I was going to be doing, my friend Katie, she did a video with me on the Iron Island Museum in Buffalo, New York. And I remember her telling me that she went to the asylum. So I asked her her personal, her personal experiences and stories and she told me. So I'm going to be telling you guys 
her experience. I'm gonna be using this little Wet n Wild palette, Rosie in the Air. This is like a dupe for the modern Renaissance. So I'll get into the story Katie told me. So Katie and her friends were standing outside of the asylum. And the asylum is located like in the city of Buffalo, but in that area, there's a lot of colleges. It's like a lot of restaurants and it's like kind of like a college scene place. So anybody could just stand outside and look into the building if they wanted to. They do have like fences so people couldn't break into the building and signs, you know, saying no trespassing and stuff like that. So they're just standing there talking and all of a sudden they see a flash of white light on the first floor. And it kind of freaked them out. Like they're like, what was that, you know, talking? And then the one friend started talking about the fire that happened there. And this fire occurred like, not when it was still in operation afterwards when it was abandoned. And they're just talking about it. And a few minutes later, they saw like a blue light on the third floor. And it looked like a flash of lightning. And at this point, you know, they're scared. They're freaking out like, what the hell was that? So they take, they start taking off running. And when she looked behind her, the entire second floor lit up with a bright white light. And when she was telling me this, I was like, I wonder if it's like a residual haunting of like the electric shock therapy. I don't know. That was just my guess. But I thought that was really interesting. And Katie has heard other stories of her friends and like friends of friends who have been into this asylum. I guess people would break in through the basement. There was a window where people would crawl in and in the basement there still was wheelchairs, medical equipment, like IV stands and beds and tables, just a whole bunch of stuff was still down there. And people have said that the wheelchairs will move by themselves. People heard voices and then they also have heard screams. I guess one time, I guess this is kid from my high school, Katie told me about it. This kid was up in one of the towers doing an e EVP session. And all of a sudden he heard old, like old fashioned music coming from the loudspeakers. And that scared him. You know, I don't even think there was electricity running through that building. And he heard that. So he, of course he ran out. And Katie's boyfriend also broke into that building and seen for his own eyes wheelchairs moving and he heard voices of children. Lots of strange things have happened in this asylum. I wonder if it's like residual hauntings because I guess what a residual haunting is, is like occurrences happening. Like say someone when they were alive, they would walk up and down the basement stairs at a certain time every day to do laundry or whatever and when they pass at that time when they would go down there to do laundry you people could claim that they would hear the footsteps at those times so with all those people through the 140 years that that building has been there like people have died and came and went. I'm sure there was terrible things that happened. It makes sense that that building would be haunted. I forgot to bring blush with me. I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna put a little lipstick on my cheeks. <laughs> we'll try this out. Hopefully this blends. I'll put some lipstick on now too. This is from Bite Beauty. This is my Sephora gift. It's a really pretty mauve shade. I think it's in Glace, and I love how it has that point to it, so it's just easy for a easy application. So like I told you, you guys before, the asylum was turned into a hotel. It's called the Hotel Henry, and 
I guess when they were doing construction and everything, the new owner said he had no experience with the paranormal. He didn't hear any noises. He didn't see anything moving. Like, he said pretty much it was all a spooky story. And I don't know if he's just saying that because he doesn't want to scare people away from coming to the new hotel. But I don't know. What do you guys think of the stories and the asylum? Would you guys stay at a hotel that used to be an asylum? I'm curious. I would love to know. I don't know if I would get much sleep, honestly. I'm going to show you guys some pictures. I'm going to do a little side slideshow and show you what the asylum looks like as a hotel. It's quite beautiful. If you love like architecture and old tiles and old fashioned staircases, definitely, you know, check that out. I'll show you guys now. <music> gonna put mascara on this is my l'oreal um unlimited i love this mascara no one ever talks about it it has this little thing where you could curve it and i'm gonna set everything down with this iconic london prep set and glow it's so pretty all right guys so that's it for my makeup and myths i would love if you guys would like and subscribe and if you are interested, I do have a playlist. I'll link that down as well. It's like my Halloween playlist. I have other makeup and myth stories. So, yeah, that is it. Let me know what you guys think of this story, if you have anything similar, or if you have anything you would like me to do research and a story about. I will be doing these stories once a month, okay? All right, guys, I will see you soon. Bye.